Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win, or you find a way to lose. Anthony Joshua returns to the ring after his two back-to-back -back losses to Alexander Yusuf. Anthony Joshua is going to be fighting Jermaine Franklin uh, this Saturday on the 1st of April. And he is looking to do, I mean, really, really big things in this uh, last stretch of his boxing career. Now, Anthony Joshua uh, has reigned at the top of the heavyweight division for quite some time, being a unified champion. He's, uh, his record currently stands at 24-3 with 22 KO, KOs. So he's a heavy hitter. But he seems to have kind of gotten away from being that aggressive, aggressive, vicious fighter that he once was. Uh, and kind of seemed to have been more evolving his style to being a boxer puncher and taking less risks after the Andy Ruiz fight. But we saw that that style of fighting didn't really benefit him going into the fight with Usyk, seeing that he fought Usyk twice and lost twice. Uh, he went into a bit of a downward spiral, but I think the fall has been broken uh, since he landed over in the camp with Derek James. Now, for those who are still doubting Derek James or wondering you know, what Derek James can do for Anthony Joshua, I say let's give Derek James the benefit of the doubt. Let's give Anthony Joshua the benefit of the doubt. Take a look at what, what Derek James has done with Frank Martin. Look at what he's done with Jamel Charlo. Look what he's done with Earl Spence. Uh, not just having his guys win fights, but let's really throttle back and, and, and just take a little moment to really think about what, what I'm getting at here. Derek James got Jamel Charlo, and Jer Jamel Charlo was, to me, at a crossroads in his boxing career. He was considered the less talented of the two Charlo brothers, the twins. Um, he wasn't considered a power puncher, and Jamal was getting a lot of the acclaim, a lot of the notoriety, and a lot of the, the praise. But Jamel decided that he wanted to get up, leave from uh, the camp there with Ronnie Shields, and asked if uh, his buddy Earl Spence and his camp with Derrick James if they had some space for him. They had made space for him. He went up there and he never turned back. And you look at the direction Jamel Charles' career has gone now opposed to his brother's career. Now, I'm not saying Jamal had a, had a bad career, but what I'm saying is look at where Jamel is. And I really think him deciding... Uh, to, that he wanted something different for himself in his career. I, I just think that's one of the best decisions career-wise he could have made. Now let's take a look at Earl Spence, okay? Really quick, uh, father and Earl were at one of the amateur meets. Father went to Derrick James. He just happened to be in the stands together. Asked him, hey, think you could help my son? He said, yeah, I think so. I brought him out there to train with him. Never turned back. Uh, you look at Earl Spence, that horrible, horrible car accident he, that he was in. Everything went quiet, radio silence. Gets in the lab with Derek James. This man comes back to the sport of boxing, 147 pound division, gets in there with Danny Garcia. And he had Danny Garcia in bad shape. But Danny Garcia is tough. So, so what that tells you right there is there's something about Derek James and his methods and his ability to train and how effective is it he is as not just a trainer, but like a teacher, okay? Now, then Frank Martin, this guy comes out of nowhere. Earl Spence signs him, he's out there training with Derrick James. I've seen, what, two fights with him now? That I've seen, okay? Uh, and look at what Frank Martin has been doing in the ring. And I'm telling you right now, Frank Martin, is a major player. 135, not sure, there's no fat on him. I'm not sure if he could squeeze on the 130, but, it, but at 135, 140, Frank Martin is a problem with that heat-seeking missile of a left hand and his right hand and his ability to take just half a step back, a quarter of a step back, to, to go fighting from the outside to mid-range to the inside being able to fight from inside to the outside, like, you know, the, the, the angles and everything he does. Absolutely amazing. IQ all around. So what I'm getting at is, if Derrick James can do that for Jamel, Earl Spence, Frank Martin, why can't he do it for someone who's already proven that he can dominate at the, at the top of the heavyweight division? Look at Anthony Joshua, man, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, man. You know what I mean? 
240, 250 pounds. Extreme power, extreme athleticism, extreme discipline. Someone who wants to get back on top. Now, Anthony Joshua said a couple of things that I found interesting. He said, look, you are, in case you guys weren't aware, he said he wants to become a billionaire. And with Anthony Joshua, he was on cruise control heading that direction. Huge paydays, but had to take a little bit of a pay cut, had to fight in a smaller venue, you know, going into the, uh, the, this one April belt. But you know what happens? He respects the sport of boxing. He understands his position. But that being said, with this fight with Jermaine Franklin, listen, I just think, I think Jermaine Franklin is an outstanding human being. I think he's a great fighter. I just don't think he beats Anthony Joshua. Now, that being said, we got to wait and see how things go this this weekend. But even um, Franklin went on record and said, look, I'm not I'm not Andy Ruiz. We don't have the same style. Andy Ruiz is more of a pressure fighter who explodes in spurts. And he said he's like a stark contrast from that style of fighting. So, so we'll have to wait and see just what he brings in the ring. But I will tell you this, Jermaine Franklin is pretty much shredded for this fight. And I'm going to say shredded compared to what he looked like. And I was very impressed by that. But for Anthony Joshua, I just don't see the fight going past two, three rounds. I think Anthony Joshua will get him out of there. And I'm going off of just the work that Derek James has been able to do with his fighters and the results uh, that they produced in the ring. I can't see it being any different for Anthony Joshua, no matter how much I like and respect Jermaine Franklin. It's not a personal attack on him. I think he's, a, I think he, I think he's solid. I think he's good. I actually think he's pretty great for the heavyweight division. I think he beats a lot of those guys. I just don't think he's going to be able to handle Anthony Joshua. I know Jermaine Franklin's used to fighting guys much taller than him, maybe bigger, maybe stronger. But he's got something special about his hands and his boxing ability and IQ too. I just don't think it's going to be enough for a guy like AJ, especially with AJ having that great teacher, Derek James. Now, once he gets past Franklin, AJ's already said, one, he wants to become a billionaire. He knows what he has to do. He has to beat Franklin, then he'll have another fight. Not sure who the next opponent's going to be, but we know Dillian White is the front runner. But Eddie Hearn changes his story all the time, and he talks in code sometimes, so we don't know who's going to be next. But let's say it's Franklin, then he fights uh, Dillian White. After that, he said he wants to become undisputed. So he's saying, you know, look, however, whatever it takes to get there, but in addition to becoming undisputed, I also want to fight Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury before I hang it up. So Anthony Joshua already has things mapped out for him and his career, but he knows in order to make those things come to fruition, he has to win. And I like to hear him talk, uh, especially about uh, his his ambitions and and how he, he wants to endeavor to make sure those ambitions are uh, reached. Um, so we will see how things go. Eddie Hearn kind of put something out there. I think I have it on my phone. I'm going to do a short on it tomorrow. But Eddie Hearn was basically saying, if Anthony Joshua gets past Franklin, make AJ versus Fury for the WBC title, and then make Usyk versus Water for the unified heavyweight championships, right? And then the winner of those fights go on to fight each other for Undisputed. Now, this is something Eddie Hearn proposed. And I, to be honest with you, I, I think that would be a, a kind of cool, like, a, a elimination uh, type deal, and that would be great. And I'll be honest with you, if you ask me who wins between Tyson Fury and AJ, I'm going to wait to give my opinion on that till after this weekend. I think AJ has everything it takes to beat Tyson Fury, but, but Tyson Fury is hard to vote against him. Hard to vote against him. Not even going to get into all the other crap that I almost said. I'm just going to leave that alone. It's hard to go against Tyson Fury. Um, and then Deontay Wilder and Yusick. Yusick can fight. Simple. The problem is Deontay Wilder and that right hand. Every opponent that he's faced. He's knocked him out, okay? Whether out cold or to where a ref has to stop it or they develop Bambi leg, they twit, they start seizing on the ground, whatever it is. Every opponent, at some point during their fight, he's knocked them out, okay? 
I just can't see Yusik escaping, evading, ducking, hiding the right hand of Deontay Water. Once Deontay Water locks in on him, once he zeroes in, it's over. Okay? So that being said, I think Water would beat Yusik. Does Yusik have the ability to, to, to put on a master class from the first second of the first round to the last second of the last round? Yes, he does. Against Wilder, I'm not so sure. Okay? Just being honest. But if Yusik was to pull it off, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be really like shocked. Because we know what he's capable of. But I would say but I would, what I would be surprised at is how if he was able to absorb the water right hands. That's what would shock me. But Yusik managing to, to just smart box intelligently and, and not make the mistakes and end up meeting the fate of Luis Ortiz. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised because Luis Ortiz almost pulled it off. He just um, he made a mistake. Um, but Deontay Walter doesn't like those boxes. But he's also evolved his style as well. And I really don't, you know, like I said with Walter, I don't really like to see a, a lion turn to a pussycat. Let a lion be a lion. Let him eat meat. Don't have him eating lettuce. Um, don't have him eating cabbage. And definitely don't have him putting any, du <laughs> any duck sauce on it. But that being said, we'll see if AJ can get back on the winning streak. Next two fights, definitely. And then after that, see how things are going. I would still think, oh, and he wants Joe Joyce. He wants to fight Joe Joyce as well. But I would think before he gets in there with a water or, or Tyson Fury, <clears throat> he should probably fight the likes of uh, a Hergovic, Zhang, um, Joyce, someone about his height, his reach, and just see how he does. Because when he gets in there with Fury, you know, he's going to have to deal with all those things. When he gets in there with water, he got to deal with those things, but he got to deal with a lot of speed too. Water, water gets that right hand off. I mean, the type of speed and the the the, the, the position where he's able to, his feet aren't even even set to throw. He just can just let the right hand go, and it, and you're out of there. Like that's just he just he can't teach that what water is able to do. Um, but I would like to see him get maybe three fights. But it looks like if he's looking good after the Dillian White fight. Everybody's going to jump back on the AJ train, and Eddie Hearn is going to push for uh, the biggest opportunity possible. And for those of you who say not Eddie Hearn will do that, look, man, this whole thing with Conor Ben and Pacquiao is out the window. Conor Ben and Eubank Jr. is damn near close to a deal being done, from my understanding. So Eddie Hearn is going to go where the money's at because he knows, AJ knows, and everyone else in boxing knows it's a short shelf life. And I think AJ realized that he's at the more towards the end of his career. I think he's beyond the middle. He's, he's more that, that last final stretch. And he still wants to become a billionaire. And he's going to do what's necessary. But that being said, glad to see AJ's back. Glad to see Franklin getting a career, career high payday. I understand he's making a couple, I mean, uh, maybe a couple to a few million dollars. And that's just really outstanding. Because in my opinion, Jermaine Franklin, he's already won. He would have never got an opportunity to make this kind of money. Ever. Ever. You understand? He's not an elite heavyweight. They just guys are just too big. Um, but we'll see Saturday he may prove me wrong. But but the kind of money he's making, even if he beats AJ, who is he gonna fight next to make that kind of money? Is he's making that kind of money because of AJ. So there's no more you know you know what I'm saying? So uh if he loses, he's definitely not gonna be making that kind of money stateside. Um and even trying to go over there to the desert. To get a big fight, I still think it would be tough for Jermaine Franklin if he loses. So he, he, he's he got to win. If he wins, he he may be out of here. Definitely looking at some million-dollar purses in the future. It's just, who's he going to fight? If he beats AJ, he going to fight Fury? I doubt it. Fight Joyce? I doubt it. He'd probably be looking more to fight like an Andy Ruiz or something like that. Uh, Frank Sanchez. I just don't see him going from AJ straight to Usyk or... To, to Fury, I mean, those guys want dancing partners that can bring in big money. You know, Jermaine Franklin's just, even being AJ, he's not going to bring in huge money. Okay, so he'll still be at the back of the line when it comes to a Wilder, when it comes to a Fury, when it comes to a Usyk, even when it comes to maybe a Hergovic. I still think Jermaine Franklin will be kind of, and when they look at the pecking order, I think he'll be behind those guys. So, 
Jermaine Franklin really has a win. I just think he's, I think Tom Cruise Mission Impossible. You know what I'm saying? But that being said, glad to see AJ back. Glad to see Franklin uh, in the mix. And looking forward to see what the future holds with AJ getting his billion dollars, fighting Joe Joyce, fighting Deontay Wilder, and fighting Fury. All good fights, all good scraps. Let's hope they can make them happen. That being said, y'all keep cool shots to the veterans. All seven continents, I'm in the breeze.